So Colton, we're down here at Kentucky Lake, and right here where we're at is kind of your backyard. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of where you learn to fish. I know fishing conditions have been a little bit tough lately, but you brought a whole arsenal of tackle. We brought plenty of stuff to throw from, you know, right now we're fishing up shallow, trying to, you know, catch some in this little bit of bank grass that we got growing on the lake. The last few years, the bank grass has actually kind of repopulated. So okay. it's been a really good thing for the small fish, and I think it's part of what's kind of bringing the lake back a little bit. Okay, well, good. Well, let's go try to catch a couple fish, and I want to talk to you a little bit about all the tackle that you have designed. You don't look old enough to have created a full tackle line, but in fact you have so let's go catch a fish show me some of the lures that you have and hopefully we can put a couple fish in the boat <laughs> that sounds like a plan <laughs> there we go there we go perfect look at there look well, what bait i caught that on Hey, most people think we're crazy throwing a jerk bait this time of year, but when they ain't on a ledge somewhere, we gotta resort to something. You know, and this is an interesting story because Colton, this bait is really how I got introduced to Jinko lures because this color pattern here, I have thrown for quite some time. It was a special edition color that was made for Bass Pro Shop. When they quit making that color, I just went on to search for color yeah. alone. and. This color with this gold and black used to be a color called brownie. Yep. I found this bait and I can tell you, <laughs> I took this thing up to Wisconsin on a smallmouth fishing trip and I promise you that lure there has caught well over 60 or 70 four pound smallies. <laughs> And uh, I came down here and I thought, well, I got to at least give it a try. <laughs> hey, and it paid off. I'm over here swinging and missing like crazy. Well, I think I've thrown it three times and I've already hooked up <laughs> on a fish. But uh, this was my introduction to Jinko Lures. And I saw they were made in Kentucky and I yeah. thought, hey, Kentucky Bait Company, let's give them a shot. There you go. Got him to commit that time. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. You want that or? No. Nice. That's a nice bass right there, buddy. Thank you. You could have caught that fish off the bass out that I caught while ago. <laughs> and the fish, you know, she's she's still spawning. It's June. It's what second week of June? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. It's crazy. We've been sitting here talking about why they're not offshore, and now that there's why she's still fanning her bed. There you go. That's something a lot of people miss on this lake. You know, we're up here fishing shallow. That was under a little walkway on a dock. Let's get her back in the water, get her back going. So Colton, you actually won the high school national bass fishing championship. Yep. What body of water was that on? Pickwick Lake. Back then, we're talking high school, were you Interested in designing and painting and altering lures? I got my start with painting baits and just trying to find something to get a little bit of a competitive advantage. I just, I felt like, you know, I, I think this color will work or I should mess with this just a little bit or, you know, tying hair jigs was something that, you know, was big for me. All that stuff piqued my interest in bait making and lure designing and that type of stuff. And I also carve a little bit on the side for kind of a hobby, I guess. So basically my hobby, my life, my business and everything is all basically based off of being a lure junkie. So your tinkering and painting turned into more than a hobby, literally a <laughs> career. Yep. When you won the high school national championship, that came with some scholarship money, right? Yeah, 50 something thousand. 50 something thousand dollars and uh and i didn't go <laughs> but you had already decided that hey i'm going to do something with lure manufacturing yep in a very short amount of time you've now got distribution in most tackle outlets and we're talking bass pro shop cabela's and you got some stuff at walmart amazon yep how in the world did you gain such quick distribution of your brand something i really focused on was making a really, really quality product for, you know, the right price, but at the same time, it's getting out there and getting in front of people, you know, and, and making people want to use your stuff. Just getting out there and meeting people and having a good time and fishing with them. And, you know, of course, I don't get to fish with everybody that, you know, buys a lure from me, but I enjoy teaching somebody about fishing. And if that happens to be my lure that they're using, that's just that much better. Like there's things that I like about certain baits, you know, and back whenever I first got started, 
I'd sit down with a piece of paper and draw what come out to me that looked like it was a combination of all the things I liked, and, and that's kind of how it started. From the beginning, it was more of a, I like this about this and that about that, and it's almost now kind of involved to like, I just like the way something in my mind looks. Like I have an image in my head of what something should look like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm assuming the brand Jinko is a combination of your last name and something else? Yep, so Jinko actually was spelt J-E-N-C-O, which is Jennings Company. Yeah. We decided the K looked cooler in the logo. Yeah. And so the funny thing is the logo is really kind of crazy looking. Mm -hmm. So the O is actually my hair, I guess, you know, like the all the curls and wildness that I get going on. Oh, so wait a minute, I see it now. So yep. this is your face, your eyes. Yep. And this is all And the then hair. all of this. <laughs> yep, all that up there. I hope for your sake and your logo, male pattern baldness doesn't set in. <laughs> I know, right? We'll have that's, to, we'll have to take gonna... an area of that logo <laughs> and take it out. <laughs> that's what I tell everybody. It's like, when I start going bald, I'm gonna shave the logo too. <laughs> What's that? It's just like a little walking bait. Walking bait. What do you call it? It's called a flea bag. Okay. There you go. He let you know he was home, didn't he? Yeah, for sure. It's probably a little small now. Yep. A little smally. Is that a small one? Yep. Sure is. What do you know? Blew up on that top water bait. Don't let him get you, boy. Those yeah, jumpers are good for that, aren't they? Yeah, they sure are. Look at the size of that bait versus the size of that fish. I mean, fish will sometimes eat lures literally half their size, and that ain't <laughs> far from it. He's got a bad attitude, though. <laughs> Born with a bad attitude. Get back in there, little buddy. <sighs> well, Colton, you truly have a fascinating story, and it's amazing it started right here bass fishing for your local high school. I'm looking forward to see what you produce in the years to come. You're a young man. You got a lot of years left in the tackle industry. I'm super excited to just keep on trying to innovate something new and come up with new ideas and enjoy my time out here and hang out with you guys, you know? New materials, new lines, new rods, new technologies always provide new opportunities and new ways to catch fish. And we'll be catching fish in ways we never dreamed of 10 years from now. It's advanced a lot in just in the last five. Absolutely. Well, nice meeting you, man. Yep. Thank you. Hey, it's a pleasure having you on the boat. <laughs>